So friends, Jim Jordan and other House Republicans recently sent a letter to New York District Attorney Alvin Bragg trying to, in a very real sense, interfere in the New York State investigation of Donald Trump's crimes. Well, District Attorney Bragg just sent Jim Jordan his reply. And boy, did he put Jim Jordan in his place. Let's talk about that, because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, I'm sure you saw the other day, Congressman Jim Jordan and other House Republican Committee chairmen sent a letter to New York District Attorney Alvin Bragg demanding that Bragg explain himself because they found it outrageous that Bragg was investigating and likely indicting Donald Trump for the crimes he committed in New York in a very real sense, in a very direct sense, in a very unconstitutional sense. Put a pin in that one, friends. Jim Jordan and his cohorts in Congress were trying to interfere in a state criminal investigation. Well, District Attorney Alvin Bragg just sent his reply to Jim Jordan. Here is the reporting from Axios about that reply. Headline, Manhattan DA sends scathing response to GOP's request for testimony. And that article begins, Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg's office on Thursday rebuffed a request from top House Republicans for testimony and documents about his investigation into former President Trump. Bragg's response leaves Republicans with little room to maneuver in their effort to dent the probe's credibility, forcing them, the House Republicans, to decide whether to venture into the uncharted territory of subpoenaing a local prosecutor. In a letter to Judiciary Committee Chair Jim Jordan, Oversight Chair James Comer, and House Administration Chair Brian Steele, Bragg's General Counsel, Leslie Dubeck, said the GOP request is an unprecedented inquiry into a pending local prosecution. The House GOP's request to Bragg only came after Donald Trump created a false expectation that he would be arrested the next day, and his lawyers reportedly urged you, meaning the House Republicans, to intervene, she wrote. Neither fact is a legitimate basis for congressional inquiry. So friends, now let's turn to the letter itself, the letter from New York District Attorney's Office General Counsel Leslie Dubeck. I'm going to quote from Ms. Dubeck's letter at some length because it is so heartening when you see a government official who actually has an allegiance to the law and an understanding of the Constitution, unlike Jim Jordan. And I'll warn you as I'm going through Ms. Dubeck's letter, I'll probably include a good bit of snarky editorial comments, but I'll point out when I'm doing that. So here is Ms. Dubeck's letter on behalf of the New York District Attorney's Office. To the Honorable Jim Jordan, I have a hard time calling him Honorable, so I'm just going to say to Jim Jordan, Brian Steele, and James Comer, Dear Chairman Jordan, Steele, and Comer, the District Attorney of New York County is investigating allegations that Donald Trump engaged in violations of New York State penal law. The investigation is one of thousands conducted by the Office of the District Attorney in its long history of pursuing justice and protecting New Yorkers. The investigation has been conducted consistently with the District Attorney's oath to faithfully execute the laws of the State of New York. The district attorney pledged that the DA's office would publicly state the conclusion of our investigation, whether we conclude our work without bringing charges or move forward with an indictment. 
he, that is the district attorney, stands by that pledge. And if charges are brought at the conclusion, it will be because the rule of law and faithful execution of the district attorney's duty require it. Your letter, now referring to Jim Jordan's letter, your letter dated March 20, in contrast, is an unprecedented inquiry into a pending local prosecution. The letter only came after Donald Trump created a false expectation that he would be arrested the next day, and his lawyers reportedly urged you to intervene. Neither fact is a legitimate basis for congressional inquiry. The district attorney is obliged by federal and state constitutions to protect the independence of state law enforcement functions from federal interference in other words, Jim, butt out, the letter continues. The letter, Jim Jordan's letter, seeks non-public information about a pending criminal investigation which is confidential under New York state law. In other words, you know, Jim, you might not care about complying with the law, but we here in New York do care, and we intend to comply with our laws. The letter continues, the DA's office is cognizant of DOJ's longstanding policy of not providing Congress with non-public information about investigations. So you have to love what Ms. Dubeck just did there. She said, um, Jim, you couldn't get this kind of information out of your own law enforcement agency, the Department of Justice. You really can't get it out of the law enforcement agency of a separate sovereign, the state government, the New York District Attorney's Office. To summarize, she's basically saying, in your face, Jim. At least that's my interpretation. The letter continues. The letter's requests are an unlawful incursion into New York's sovereignty. And then she goes on to basically say, so, so Jim, let me school you on the Constitution and the relevant Supreme Court precedent. And here she goes. The Constitution limits Congress's power to those specifically enumerated, and the Tenth Amendment ensures that any unenumerated powers are reserved to the states. It is therefore generally understood, Jim, that a congressional committee may not inquire into matters which are reserved to the states. And she cites Supreme Court precedent in case Jim wants to read up on the assertions she's making in this letter. Among the powers reserved to the states, perhaps the clearest example of traditional state authority is the punishment of local criminal activity she throws in another Supreme Court site there. Thus, federal interference with state law enforcement is peculiarly inconsistent with our federal framework, and that also comes from Supreme Court precedent. Accordingly, in summary, uh, these requests are unconstitutional. Consider yourself schooled, Jim. Ms. Dubeck then concludes the letter as follows. We trust that you appreciate the importance of our federal system, state law enforcement activities, and the critical need to maintain the integrity and independence of state criminal law enforcement from federal interference. So to sort of sum up what General Counsel Dubeck was saying to Jim Jordan, Maybe if I could translate it from legalese to Jersey speak. I'm a Jersey guy. She was basically saying, Jim, why don't you just go ahead and take your attempts to interfere in our New York State investigation of the crimes of Donald Trump, and um, why don't you just, you know, put them where the sun don't shine, respectfully. Okay, so that was all of my editorial comment there. 
So friends, I quote from General Counsel Dubeck's letter pretty extensively because she gets everything right. She gets the Constitution right. She gets the Tenth Amendment right. She gets the Supreme Court precedent right. She gets Jim Jordan's attempt to interfere in a state court prosecution right. Indeed, she exposes Jim Jordan as someone who is willing to violate the Constitution to try to protect a criminal former president of the United States. So friends, now we will turn back to our Donald Trump indictment watch. Because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again soon.